You're welcome to Let's Talk. We should sit down and talk. We need to sit down and talk. How Nigeria should do How we're going to do about it. We want to stand up and say no to corruption. We're going to do our job because we're telling the system. You are not just doing good for yourself or for the nation. You're also doing good for the future. Boko Haram is an attack. It's a spiritual attack. It's a satanic attack on Nigeria. We must, if we come to recognize it, we will understand then how to look for the solution. The Southern National Conference, how do we want to achieve that in our prison system? We need to sit down and iron out how Nigeria should be governed. Hello and welcome again. It's uh, Let's Talk and uh, this is the place that gives us that opportunity to take a look about uh, around and look at issues that are trending right now at home and abroad. And today's uh, discourse is going to be taking us to something that has been trending for a while with a lot of reactions uh, coming from different quarters of, the Niger of Nigeria. And we're talking about the controversies of the National Honors Award in Nigeria right now. And uh, with me to take a look at this and really do justice to this issue is a gentleman called Taiwo Adideji, a legal practitioner, social expert, consultant, and public policy analyst. I'd like to welcome you, sir, to the show. Sure, most of course. It's, my pleasure. It's really great to have you here. It's my pleasure. And now, sir, talking about this issue about the national awards right now, that is a major uh, issue of reactions. And uh, a lot of analysts and um, uh, prominent Nigerians have had a lot to say about it concerning the composition of those who have been given these awards. It is not the first time. Uh, also in 2004, during uh, Bassanjo's uh, tenure as president, there were also calls and criticisms coming from different quarters of the country. Now, we are now uh, saddled with the same issue, which is credibility and uh, what have you. What is your take on this, sir? Well, thank you very much. My take on the issue of the National Award is that I'm happy that you said it's not the first time yes. that it will maybe be generating a sort of controversy mm -hmm. as to the credibility of the award. And we should also take our step back the memory line to say that the National Award, the concept of the National Award is not a, it's not a recent phenomenon. In the sense that it has been, it has always been with us. Maybe shortly after the independence, if I remember very well, I think the 1964 Act of Parliament, mm -hmm. you know, created the a law where a law was enacted to institute the concept of the national award. And since then, many distinguished Nigerians have been given the award, credible Nigerians, mm -hmm. for that matter. But of late, there have been the controversy, and those controversies are not far-fetched in okay. the sense that. The, you know, you can, might not isolate the controversy from the fact that it is fast becoming very common to see Nigerians being associated with all sort of award, making demand for, to be honored. Okay. You know, and that has been what has generated the controversy. And when you also consider it against the backdrop of the fact that there are maybe one or two names and which is enough to even taint the credibility that, uh, of the award. Question, have yes, question mark. that half question mark. And also, why, how, the, there has always been the question of why must the incumbent honor themselves? Okay. They should leave that one to after they must have left office and in recognition of their good acts mm -hmm. for the, um, the society, the incoming government might now decide that, look, <laughs> you have contributed to the development of this country for which you are entitled okay. you know okay. uh, to be awarded with the national recognition okay. and i think that is what has generated the controversy okay thank you very much sir but uh, do you, uh, are you saying that um, this calls uh, by nigerians uh, analysts uh, are legitimate in terms of uh, what they've been saying about the, uh, the awards they are legitimate calls in terms of uh, saying that the credibility is not there any longer yeah a very very legitimate call if you also go down the memory lane, I think a, about maybe two years ago, there about you know, the distinguished Professor Shino Achebe, okay, openly rejected 
the national award. You know, this is a man that has been internationally recognized yes, in the yes, yes, yes. one of the He's best a literary giants. Giant, one of the best to have ever emerged from the continent of Africa. We can rank with anyone, you know, the world over. And for such a person to have rejected a national award, actually put a question mark on it. It calls for he, question. He's rejected it for the second time. Yes, for, exactly for the second time. So it puts a question mark on the fact that is this thing very credible. I think what the government should have done is to not to be so dismissive of the critics, okay. but to be a search light on the whole concept of the award. Because perhaps in the mindset of the distinguished professor of literature, mm -hmm. Shino Ashebe, he might have just said, well, he would have loved to be honored by his country, but that for him to now be ranked, to now be clustered together by people of questionable character, you know, character and credibility, it calls for concern. Okay. And that was why I see the call of the critic has not been misplaced. It is genuine. It is legitimate. Okay. Well, sir, you know, uh, still on these awards, uh, some experts have advocated that uh, uh, due, uh, due diligence uh, was not carried out and should be the issue, should be uh, the, the way to go before this um, selection is made mm -hmm. to carried out on the uh, shortlisted um, awardees, actually that due diligence should have been carried out. And right now, what is the case is, is somehow putting the cart before the horse. Exactly. And now, the government, uh, due to pressures from different quarters, to actually confirm that, okay, the, there is a need, uh, there is a, call, uh, um, a legitimate call on this, have said that, okay, those awardees who are not, um, who do not uh, carry themselves uh, properly or are found wanting, in any area, will have the awards revoked. Now, do you think that um, uh, the issue is about due diligence here being carried out? Uh, yes, it is. Actually, it shows in a way that maybe perhaps due diligence has not been carried out. Although, I, you know, we don't expect the president to have all the full personal knowledge or the personal details of most of the awardees, because in the sense that they are coming from different corners of the country. But since the president, we are not making excuse for him, but at the same time, as the president of the old nation, there should have been a more research-oriented finding okay. to make sure that maybe they go down, they go deep into the, to scrutinize the credentials of those who have been awarded, or to be awarded. Because how I've seen, I was maybe a bit shocked or taken aback when I saw one or two names of people who have, as recent as this, oil subsidy controversy, mm -hmm. who have been associated with maybe as personal or their business interests being indicted or being mentioned as part of those who are responsible for the subsidy controversy. I'm not saying those people are not presumed innocent mm -hmm. until they are proven guilty, but it's called for a question for or maybe past government will have stayed action that, oh, let everything be done. Government will have learned a sample from maybe legal personal disciplinary committee okay. in the institution of this senior advocate of Nigeria award All about right. five years ago or more than that, one of our very distinguished legal practitioners in this country was involved in a controversy that involved maybe he was acting for a bank trying to recover some loan from a company and in the process someone died. It wasn't as if this lawyer was directly involved in the act <laughs> or that's responsible to, for the death of the then managing director of that company. But what the Legal Personal Disciplinary Committee did was that until this controversy was resolved, they refused to honor that distinguished lawyer with the award of SAN. They refused to swear him in, in spite of the fact that he had already been nominated, mm -hmm. he had been appointed already, but this swearing in was stayed. So first, the federal government will have done the same thing in the case of this national award and make sure that they go to search the credibility of the awardees. Okay, now we're still talking about um, the process now of, um, yeah. uh, of selection right yeah. now. Uh, there are other awards that we have in the country that yeah. also are prominent awards. We have the Silver Bird Man of the Year Award, yeah. and the process actually uh, has been going on for a while, for many years now, and actually at the end of the day, it doesn't, um, reactions have been positive concerning those awards, in the sense that the public participates in the selection. The, the, and the, the, uh, the selected recipients are thrown to the public exactly. to do their own x-ray yeah. on these individuals. Do you think that uh, this, is the, uh, this is the way our uh, national awards should go? 
Yes, I think so. It is, we, we, call, we say we run a democracy. And what is democracy? Simply in the simplest definition, government of the people, for the people, by the people. What it suggests is that people must be involved at the most, decision, the most critical decision-making stages. So if a man is not credible, they should, as a matter of fact, like I'm also citing an example, that is not to say there are no criticism in the award of SAN. There have been, in fact, of late, there have been more okay. criticism from even legal practitioners than it used to be. But from, in the sense that okay, of late, they will publish names of people and expect you to get, expect to get that feedback from the citizen. So if perhaps government have done it in a way, or the, I mean the process this time around, publish the names of the intended awardees and let Nigerians react All right. by way of complaint, by way of petition. And that way every criticism will be exactly. eliminated. No, exactly. Well, this criticism we will be busy because that is not to say some of the criticism or the petition might not be frivolous. Okay. For instance, if you are in the politics, maybe your political opponent might not want you to be awarded <laughs> for obvious reasons. But hey, at least everything should be weighed in the light of their credibility and let at the end of the day, there's people's input, input of the citizens be fed. Okay, okay. Principally, and that's we, in a way, confer credibility on the process. Thank you very much. No well, if in case you just joined us, it's the less talk, and we've been taking a look at the controversy surrounding the uh, National uh, Honours Awards in Nigeria. Has been uh, generating a lot of reactions from different quarters. Some have applauded, and some majority have uh, actually criticized it. And I'm talking with the gentleman, Taiwa Dedeji here, and he's been uh, shedding some light on the issue. And uh, next question, Mr. Taiwo. A lot of Nigerians actually say that the awards right now is, seems to have been politicized, considering the composition of those, well, the composition of the award is being majority of politicians. What's your take on this? Well, my take on it, that also goes to the legality or the whole thing, because I happen to belong to a school of thought that says that when you confer it on politicians, particularly those who are presently serving yes. in government, okay. you are acting, it's a sort of illegality in the sense that, okay. you see, the code of conduct will act, actually, okay. right. you know, forbids serving public officers from taking gifts, yes. from receiving gifts of any form, in any form. And you see, when you know you are awarded, while you are still serving, it in a way shows that okay. you are receiving. It's, it's a kind of a gift by the incumbent government of which you are a part of. So you're saying it's, you a, are, kind, it's a kind of a, yes. Um, it's like you are giving gift to yourself. Okay. okay. And it is clearly forbidden that you should even accept gift during the incumbency of your. So it should be at the end of your tenure. Exactly, it should be at the end of your tenure. while you're still in office, you could run against the, the, the law or exactly. something could happen. You could run against the law. Yes. And your performance, because if giving an award should be a sort of reward for performance, okay. and we have not performed. What we've seen in Nigeria these days is that immediately someone has become the speaker of the House of Representatives or the Senate President, he becomes the Grand Commander of the Order of Niger, the Speaker becomes the Commander of the Federal Republic, the President becomes the Commander, the GCFR, that it is Grand Commander. It's automatic. Of the, it's automatic. Whereas, if the person, <laughs> you know, I, we have a president when the former president of Liberia, Samuel Dewey, at the heat of the critical mm -hmm. opposition against this regime was given, you know, an award by the Nigerian government. That is the Grand Commander of the Order of Niger. And the same Samuel was being rejected by his own people. So I believe that since like this, we actually question, put question mark on the credibility of the whole process because serving senators are being awarded, serving members of the House of Representatives, principal officers, and most, you know, critically, even serving judges. Okay. It should not be, should not because, be these because these are the same judges that government we, we, we government have cases before pending before. So we are all human beings. So in a situation we are, if, if we wait to appear to the opposition is that look, I have to roll this person has just been given the commander of the Federal Republic yesterday. So you want this person to grant an order, even if the judge herself or himself is very credible. But the, the way it appears to people is matter. The impression matters. Okay, thank you, sir. For, uh, for purpose of clarity, does the award bestow any special preferences, uh, privileges?
for the for the recipients because there have been calls that uh, those who receive the awards should not have any special privileges. They should not uh, be exclusive in terms of uh, uh, the law. They should you know sh should not be protected uh, you know unreasonably from the law if they run amok of the law. Mm, definitely, if they run, to the to, to the best of my knowledge, I'm not aware of any special privilege in terms of the maybe their law legal position that they are, they, they they don't have any other special privilege that is not open to an average citizen. citizen. It is just a kind of an honorary thing. Okay. But mind you, okay. we, privilege also might be okay. in the form of you know, the recognition okay. itself. Is a, maybe okay. it might be a kind of privilege that we, we can okay. say if a CFR president, the commander of the Federal Republic, was into a government office, he will be accorded a kind of respect. He is expected okay. to be accorded a kind of respect, you know, maybe to be attended to, not over and above every other person, but there is a presumption a, that this is a, exactly, that these are a very distinguished and honorable person. All oh, right, so sir. Now let's go into uh, the, this uh, issue, another issue that uh, also uh, being talked about, you know, in uh, different realms. We're talking about the quota system and uh, gender issues now okay. for the, as a basis for selecting uh, deserving recipients. Mm -hmm. uh, do you share this view that um, we should look at it from a quota perspective, well, in both gender and um, uh, t uh, talking about uh, tribal um, mm -hmm. aff affiliations well, right now? Well, thank you. Uh, you know, thank you. Just like uh, many of your questions, those are the questions that goes to that go to the. Mm -hmm. A root the core, of the, okay. you know, to the core of the subject under discourse. You see, I, painfully, quota system is one of the maybe painful realities of our federal system. That I personally have a lot of things against it because quota system, mind you, we segregate, we subjugate merit. Okay, and uh, promote dichotomy promote, Yes, there's no doubt about it. It promotes dichotomy. It elevates, even in a way, when you look at it, it elevates, you know, underperformance okay. because we are using quota system like it is possible for maybe my own state not to have been when we use the maybe my own region where I come from in the country maybe because we don't have many of the national awardees mm -hmm. meanwhile I have not performed as creditably as you are but because you happen to come from a part of the country where we have many of them you will be denied I will be elevated I will be selected because they need to balance it those okay. are some of the things that are not too good because it is not in every thing that we must apply the quota system. So Since what the, about the gender? What about the gender? Yeah, the gender issue, issue is that to me, I'm not a vast, I'm not a chauvinist, mm -hmm. but I believe that what a man can do, a woman can as well do, or even do better sometimes. Mm -hmm. And if anybody is going to attain any height, I personally believe that it should not be on the basis of the gender. Should be on merit. On merit, should be on merit. They are distinguished female, they are just like I think the Bible says something, neither male nor female. So if <laughs> even the Bible has said neither male nor female, that it shows that even okay. God, God does himself. not discriminate against anyone on the basis of the gender. Uh, but the only thing that if it appears, like maybe with the women folk where they sometimes clamor, that men, women, you know, more women should be included is that because it has appeared over the years that maybe Nigeria is more of a, we as a kind of patrilinear tendency that says, look, it is always the male that uh, it should be the dominant yeah, figure yeah. in the scheme of things. But yeah. ordinarily, they are distinguished like women who are can rank, you know, okay. together with their so, male count counterparts. So, so your take is that it should be on merit. It should be on merit, strictly on merit. And, uh, the strictly on merit. Tribal or gender, gender issues should not be, should not be because uh, at the end of the day, elevated it should be above that. No, it should not. Okay. Well, let, now let's look at um, uh, another issue uh, still on this um, uh, awards right now. Uh, the, a lot of analysts and uh, should I call them critics too have said that um, the, it, from the um, composition of those awarded, uh, it is a coloration of. Uh, an agenda by the government to help it, um, st how do you call it, entrench its 2015, you know, plan, you know, its political um, uh, plan for 2015. Mm -hmm. Do you agree that yeah. um, it's all a settlement issue right now mm -hmm. to make sure that 2015 is certain for the ruling uh, party? If, if I say I do not agree with that, it is, that is not to say that I, 
uh, I disagree with it at the same okay. time. I mean, okay. you get my word very well. Why? In the okay. sense that it is speculative. Okay. We, you know, uh, we can read a lot of meaning into whatever, particularly, you know, we are in a society that is so suspicion tries a lot. Mm -hmm. And the president, uh, the, politi the politicians who are the ends of affairs know that, you know, they, they can, you can't trust the politicians, but they can do everything okay. to make sure that they create the political empire that they decide to create, to use, to, to the pol kind of political structures they want to use in their maybe official ambition. Okay. So it might not be out of place, but we can't say with a kind of precision that that is the motive behind the award. It is, that is not to say things like that. Okay. So, in, what are correct. you saying? In totality, you are saying you are not uh, totally in agreement with that. Um, yes, I'm not totally idea. in agreement with that sweeping, you know, conclusion that yes. oh, the award is being given to settle for, you know, the 2015 agenda of the incumbent administration. But it might also be that is not to say. But why I say it is speculative in the sense that until maybe when we get to 2015 or the build up to 2015 mm -hmm. and we see some things happening yeah. because like what people are saying that they have their reasons we must also know because like some distinguished members of the judiciary have been confirmed with the award the suggestion or the signal that has been sent is that by 2015 we are if the government fails to run a credible election that they will look up to those they have awarded and say please so, Come and protect us. Okay. You know, we gave you this award. You know, even you know can speak use body language mm -hmm. to confer some so, so mis suggestion. Okay, there's so many, so many, uh, so many things we you know we could talk about on this issue, but due to lack of time. But okay. uh, let's let's just uh, wrap it up with this uh, question. So what do you think should be uh, for future for future future awards? What do you think um, the process should be? Well, first and foremost, the process should be that we should stop the idea of honoring the incumbent, those who are okay. staying in public office, okay. should not be conferred with award. People should be conferred with award based on their past record. Okay. And input of Nigerians should be gathered. They should not just make it a kind of a government, exclusive government thing, as if government have monopoly of knowing. You can't know the people more than the people. All right. So the people know should who be involved should in be involved the in the selection process like maybe this we cited an example like all these uh, private yes, awards of this silver board or the man this of the year ask people, this, ask people to make input mm -hmm. that is not to say those private awards in themselves are in any way 100 percent foolproof or credible but mm -hmm. Let people at least input of the people. It reduces ah, yeah. the criticism to exactly, a minimum. Exactly, to a minimum level because people are involved. They are okay, maybe through text message, it's through writing, email, internet, login, and vote. Oh, why this man has deserved it. You know, there was a time the distinguished lawyer, Shiv was okay. given a award based on what people people's view, people's input. Okay. So okay. things like that, you can't query that credibility. So my suggestion is that the national award concept should be processed in a way that people will be involved All right. in the selection. All right. I really want to thank you, uh, Mr. Taiwa Dedeji, for coming on the show today. You really uh, illuminated the whole issue and given us you know, a better perspective of how things should be. And you've heard it from uh, Mr. Dedeji. He's a legal practitioner, social expert, consultant, public policy analyst. He says that the process should be uh, interactive, that people should be involved. It should not be uh, the appointment of uh, of, um, public officers who are still still um, in, in duty should not be the case, okay? And they should be judged based on their past performances. Now, that is how we're going to draw the curtain on today's edition of uh, Let's Talk. I hope you had a wonderful time with us. For more updates, you can also go to our website and you know where to find it. It will be displayed on your screen where you can have, uh, you can have add your comments and whatever you want to say to us so we can get you and uh, get to do things better. And that's how it is. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome to Let's Talk. We should sit down and talk. We need to we sit down and talk. We need to how Nigeria is going to do what we're going to do. We want to stand up and said no to corruption, we're going to do our job because we are telling the system, you are not just doing good for yourself or for the nation, you're also doing good for the future. Boko Haram is an attack, it's a spiritual attack, it's a satanic attack on Nigeria. We must, if we come to recognize it, we will understand then how to look for the solution.
the Sovereign National Conference, how do we want to achieve that in our prison system? We need to sit down and iron out how Nigeria should be governed 